Hey everybody, it's another episode of Go Flix Yourself. My name is Ben Conowitz, and with me as always is the third horseman of the apocalypse to my first horseman of the apocalypse, Bradford Omen. Hey, that's me! And the second horseman of the apocalypse to my first horse of the apocalypse, Nate Laux. Hello! Hello! Oh boy, something's wrong with Nate's oh, horse. That's, that's <laughs> Nate and the horse he rode in on. We're going to have to get our, get our shotgun out, I think. <laughs> and the fourth horse of the apocalypse is our podcast, Go Flix Yourself. We did it, guys. We made it. Hey. Hey, did everyone get to see our new logo? Because that thing is a beaut. Yeah, if you, you see if, you, if you haven't seen it, uh, we debuted it on our, our Facebook page. It'll be up uh, on the uh, the actual uh, show account for this next episode that you're listening to right now. So if you haven't seen it, just look at your phone. Um, it was created by our good friend, John Baldazon. Ben and I used to do stand-up comedy with him back in the day, and he's an incredibly gifted artist, uh, does incredible graphic design work. He actually created our previous logo uh, before this one as well, but this one, he really put all the but stops. That one, that, that one kind of sucked compared to this one. <laughs> uh, he gave us uh, very cool cartoon versions of ourselves on a, a motorcycle with a sidecar and uh, with some E.T. inspiration and uh, kind of a Stranger Things vibe, too, I think, a little bit, like a, a cl- almost like a classic choose-your-own-adventure uh hardy boys kind of kind of vibe to it we're uh we're very it's, proud of it it's great nate you look amazing in the sidecar yeah Hi. i am i am i am riding this car hey i want to know did you request the ascot or was that was that like a editor's it's decision a stylistic or? choice by john and i stand yeah. behind it. i'm all here i'm here for it oh yeah. i want you to wear an ascot all the time now all, all I the time. and that leather jacket i honestly i wish that i looked that like that I wish that I looked like that. Okay. Hey, I, I want you to start wearing an ascot and just just to see like how long like how long it will take your dad to say something. Like, you know, like <laughs> will it happen the first day or will he be like, you know, maybe maybe maybe, maybe Ben is going through a stage here or something? Or will like the first minute he sees you be like, what what, what the hell are you doing there? What's take what's the shit? <laughs> I think yeah. honestly if I started wearing an ascot around just around it all the time. Uh, he wouldn't say anything for like the first two times, and then he'd be like, he just like pull me aside, like, "What's going on? <laughs> you, you okay? You, you okay, buddy? You okay? <laughs> you That's <need> it. Talk? <laughs> <laughs> he is oh, concerned boy. about my well being. It's fine. <laughs> uh, your, mom, your mom and I have been talking, and uh, we're not real sure you're okay, huh? huh? Like, yeah, actually, you know what on. I think would really happen is my mom would call me, and be like, your dad talked to me and asked me to tell you <laughs> you should stop. <laughs> So how you been, boy? We're, uh, we're recording remotely tonight because Brad is in. Uh, where are you, Jamaica? Yeah, I'm. I'm in. Uh, it's actually pronounced Majorca. Majorca, gotcha. Yeah. No, no, I'm in Utah uh, visiting my girlfriend Utah. Brittany. The Jamaica Sorry. of the Mount of the American Mountains. American so I, just, I just want to make sure everyone heard. I'm visiting my girlfriend Brittany. Yeah, yeah. You oh, did that. geez. Had, had a girlfriend. Uh, so yeah, see, so yeah, I'm out here, and uh, so you guys are in the future, and I'm I'm an hour behind you. Yeah, uh, that that is very impactful for our listeners, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Well, you know, time is uh, all around us every day, Obviously and constant. you know, and if there's one thing I love to do while passing the time, it's enjoying our sponsor for today, uh, and it's my girlfriend Brittany's uh, longtime friend Mandy's homemade chocolate sauce. What what that is? There's there's a string of words there that I don't even understand. Well, uh, and not, also not the string of words I thought was going to come out after, like, you know, my girlfriend, Brittany, because that could really take us down many different paths. <laughs> and then it went it went to my girlfriend, Brittany. My, my, girl, my girlfriend, Brittany's friend. special, special passionate kisses. Chocolate sauce. I'm like, well, I didn't expect the chocolate sauce. So you know, I, explain I, the chocolate sauce, Brad. So it, um, this this is uh, Brittany's friend. Uh, I mean, it's her mom's friend, Mandy, and they've been. She's she's known Brittany since she was a child, uh, and she's a very good cook. And she she makes this incredible 
homemade uh, chocolate sauce. So whenever they have, you know, dinner or, or lunch or whatever, uh, there's usually dessert with uh, vanilla ice cream and this incredible chocolate sauce. It is just like the best. Like screw Hershey's, it- sc- screw any chocolate sauce you've had anywhere else. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh that's boy, right. here comes Nate, passionate Hershey's defense. You know, let's let's not throw America's freedom down the, the drain. Oh, here. Hershey's boy. is an American staple here. Um, you can like one thing and not tarnish the other. But here, um, what is the name of this brand? Uh, it, Mandy's homemade chocolate sauce. <laughs> so, so this is not a, something is a, that's available in Utah in stores. This is homemade. oh no, yeah, not, this is not, like not at all. We can all buy. Not at all. No. Yeah. You. It'll probably be a lot. Like Ben, you might get to try it when you come out to Utah at some point. But uh... well, your 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 uh, girlfriend's mom's friend uh, is paying us money. Uh, yeah, she, she, um, I mean, she's paying me mostly like in, in dinner and like, uh, putting us up for a week and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, I know this doesn't benefit you much, but it's great for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. technically a sponsor. She is a sponsor. Yeah. I mean, to be I fair, it's, just... not, it's not, it's not like you guys enjoy the other sponsors anyway. I'm the only one who's slurping those on the air. It's, it's very true. Yeah, but in, in the future, maybe, maybe we should all talk about these sponsors. So we all get a little bit of something, right? At least I get to hear the enjoyment of your slurp. You yeah, know, well, you know, um, well, he, yeah, here, let me no, see if I can. God, no, Nate, no. Oh, it's worse when you're not next to it somehow. That's now that's just that's melted ice cream with the chocolate sauce from the spoon. So uh, mm, once it once it hits your lips, mm, never do that again. Yummers. Uh, uh, oh, it, it kind of made me a little queasy. I'm not gonna lie. That, Nate, that sounds... so is it is it is it like a is it like a, a thinner sauce or is it more? No, it like is no, it's it's definitely. It's so it's not quite as thick as a fudge. Um, it's like it's somewhere in between. Like it's not, it's definitely a uh, it's not a runny chocolate sauce. It's it's a thicker, um, warm sauce. Oh, okay. Yum. Wow. Yum. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody listening. That's just, just terrible. I don't. So you, uh, you, Man- Mandy's homemade chocolate sauce, thick and warm. <laughs> <laughs> Moving the fuck on. <laughs> Uh, hey Brad, what's the last movie you saw, buddy? Uh, I saw the Black Phone, which is hey, hey, Brad, uh, what was the movie you were supposed to watch? Well, so here's the thing: we we've been doing this this assignment thing, and and it's been it, it was a it was an easy question. What was the no, movie no. you were supposed to watch? Well, hold on, let me let me let me get there because I, I I have to paint a portrait. Um, you know, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> we we do have been doing this assignment thing, um, but we 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 didn't assign our movies until the last minute. Literally just yesterday, we did it. And this was as I was driving to the airport to come to Utah, and so uh, did you watch your movie. I, I didn't get to watch my movie, and I and I regret it because it's a movie that I was excited to watch, and I'll still be excited to watch it for the next episode. I was supposed to watch Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, but I just haven't had time since I got here. We've been doing stuff with Britney's family, and uh, it's been you know even just like trying to plan this with the podcast because I had to do some work today since I'm off a little bit this week. So when did you watch Black Phone? I watched Black Phone on Wednesday. Uh, see, if you would have said today, I was going to get really mad at you. No, no, of course. I Brittany doesn't do horror movies, so there's no way I was going to watch that today. But yeah, so I watched The Black Phone because it's uh, it's available on Peacock now, and I've been meaning to get to theaters to see it, and I just kept uh, getting busy and then putting it off. And so once it was on Peacock, I was like, all right, let's you know, let's finally watch it. And uh, man, it's it's so good. It is this. It's like a throwback to horror movies of the 1970s. Uh, this this great concept where there's this um, it takes place in this small um, small like suburb, and there's this um, person who's referred to as the grabber who has been kidnapping kids uh, in this town. And our, our main character is uh, a young young boy who gets kidnapped and ends up in the basement of this person called the grabber, played by Ethan Hawke, uh, has a, uh, a creepy mask that he has like varying pieces and stuff that make him smile or frown or shows his eyes. And uh, he starts getting uh, phone calls, the kid does, in the basement on this phone, even though it's disconnected. And the phone calls are coming from the previous Inside kids. The house. From the, I mean, technically, they've never um, done that idea before. Yeah, no, they've never done. That. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they're coming from his previous uh, victims, and so it is a, uh, a just a great scary thriller. Um, Ethan Hawke is he's fantastic in this role because he's menacing, but he doesn't overdo it. Like he's not you know really leaning into it and doing this over the top performance. He's just a real creepy guy. Um, and uh, all, all the kids in the movie are fantastic too, but it's just a, it was just a, a stellar movie. And this is from, uh, if you don't know, it's from Scott Derrickson, uh, who directed Dr. Strange. Um, he's also d- directed horror movies as well, like Sinister. Uh, and he's uh, he's a solid horror filmmaker. And this one was, uh, it was great. 
Yeah, after gonna... this is what he did after he parted with uh, Multiverse of Madness, right? This is yes, the project yes. he went to work on. So indeed, um, and I've heard I've heard really good things about it. That, like you said, it's just a solid movie as a whole, and acting's good, direction's good, and it just has a like a, a good vibe to it as well, like a consistent vibe. So I've not seen yeah. it, but I, I really want to. You should watch it. It's easy to watch at home now on on Peacock. On, on Peacock. Yeah. Well, um, uh, Benny, what did you watch, man? Uh, my assignment was to watch The Northman, uh, which is an A24 revenge film. And so I watched The Northman, which is an A24 revenge film. And it good was po- very- good, good, good podcasting, Ben. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm just trying to say I was assigned to watch a movie, so I watched the movie. And then you repeated. Yeah, hey, thought- uh, no, but who, who made that again? What, what production company? Uh, that's A24, Nate. And what was what's the it, genre? Yeah, what's it called? It's called the Northman guys. Oh, okay. Uh, by the same company uh, that produced, you know, the Vivich and uh-huh. uh, Midsommar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, just a bunch of other schlocky crap. Wow, wow. I, 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 I hear they're at their like ten year anniversary now, man. Uh, I I have such a love hate relationship with eight twenty eight twenty four. It is it. God, I've never seen a studio smell its own farts so much. But I will say the Northman was really fucking good. It was, and also, really also those farts most of the time smell amazing. The yeah, they're, they're pretty good. It's a vile, filled piece of shit. So wait, 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 wait what is again? the Green Knight? Is a oh, vile really? piece of shit. It's okay. Excellent. So I mean, that is <laughs> that is unbelievably way off base, and Ben's just a grump because he can't handle artistic movies. No, it's not. That's a it's a bad I'd movie. Say, I think I think critics would disagree with you mostly on that. I will say this: I've tried to watch it three times. I could not get into it either. I, I didn't love it. It's a bad movie. M- and I love is- Dev, I love Dev to P- Patel, but it just it just didn't hit me. No, know. there are movies that A twenty four does that I really love, uh, and Northman is one of them. It's a great revenge flick. It's the story is well told. Cinematically, it's gorgeous. Uh, the acting's phenomenal. Everything in it, I really enjoyed it all the way through. It is vicious and brutal, just what you would expect from uh, that style of movie. And I, I, I really did enjoy it. It was fucking brutal. Yeah, it's a fantastic movie. Um, when it comes to revenge, it is of a, a classic. Uh, it definitely draws from uh, Hamlet and The Lion King, um, especially. It is, there's just, yeah, the cinematography is gorgeous. The action is just raw and hard hitting. Um, and man, Alexander Sarsgaard, whew, he got ripped for this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah it, was, it was like they asked him, hey, do you only want to lift shoulders? And he was like, yeah, <laughs> I definitely I just want to do shoulder uh, workouts. Hey, speaking of A24, did you guys ever end up seeing um, Lamb from last year? I have not. Okay. No, I, I, I have not seen. either. Uh, but it was the weirdest premise, and I, I didn't know if you watched it. I, I have not watched it yet. Uh, but Because I, I do think maybe it's in subtitles. I, I don't remember. But uh, A24 put it out. Weirdest premise of a movie, and I need to watch it. Maybe I'll put it on my list of things I need to watch. But Nate, do you have um, a hard time with the reading? Uh, yeah, because typically trying to get other things done, I have a hard time just watching movies without like, you know, like working, um, or doing something else. Like I can't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't do well not moving and watching. Can, so can we trust your opinion? Like if you, if you like or don't like something, if you're not really paying no, attention to No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I wouldn't trust my opinion on any, literally anything. <laughs> I wouldn't trust my opinion. <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, it, 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 it is just. I mean, there are certainly films with subtitles I love, but it, it, I just... Is this, is this the same thing like when when I would like try to tell my dad a story growing up and he would be like working on... He would like get up and like grab a screwdriver and start working on a cabinet? <laughs> and so like, yes. oh, that, yes. He'd be like, uh-huh, that, that uh-huh, is me. Yeah, that is me. And then what happened? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, but I find out that, that he, he does genuinely... Listen, I have a hard time not listening when I'm not doing a hundred things at the same time. Like I just have a hard time with it. And I think it might be uh, what they call... Uh, ADHD. I don't know. Um, that, but, that's, uh, that's, that sounds like a myth. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Is that why you it might just be list, like the feel good movie of the year? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey um, guys, I watched. I watched a movie. What'd what'd you watch? What did you watch? Mission Impossible Two. Oh, <laughs> you sound so excited! It was guys, guys. I know ah. you guys love these films, but man. Hold on, let's uh, back up. We do not love Mission Impossible 2. 
No one loves Mission Impossible 2. Believe it or uh, not, no, some, no, people do. Do. People some people do. Some people do, yeah. yeah. Like, it, it is. Like, it is. Uh, I will say this, because I, I dug into it a little bit more, because I, I was really interested. Like, how, you know, it, it, it certainly doesn't feel the same as the first film at all. New director, these kind of things. Uh, they went with not just, like, a heist, or not even heist, but, like, a like a spy movie, and they tried to add some romance, tried to add some, you know... And they ramped up the of, action too, like because the action yeah. of the first one is is it's like it's like an action thriller, you know. And yeah, and exactly. Mission Impossible so, two went straight up action. And they specifically, you know, uh, I guess Tom Cruise specifically wanted John Woo to do it because John Woo had had you know the successes with uh, Broken Arrow, Face Off, these kind of things, which are you know legitimate action films, and he, the guy knows he knows action, but uh, it, it just did not work. I, I read that like. John Woo had like three and a half hours, like his first iteration of the film that he like turned in, like was like three and a half hours. And they're like, yeah, that, that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> like, um, and so, uh, I, and, and again, I read this, not sure if it's absolutely true, but I read that essentially Tom Cruise took over the editing of the film. Um, and it's not edited well. Like it, it, it really isn't like the, it just doesn't, like, like it, it, it seems like a film that has an hour of it cut out somewhere. And maybe, maybe if you get some of that back, you can create a, a better, better story. But I also, whatever I just watched for, you know, hour and a half, two hours, I don't want to watch another hour of it too. So I'm, I'm stuck in that limbo of like, eh, it just wasn't very like good. I, you not. know, I will say this, Tandy Newton is, is always like, I, I always, I've always had the biggest crush on her. And, um, She's very cute there. Still very cute. Uh, Tom Cruise has his like interview with a vampire. Uh, long hair here. Um, he's okay. Uh, it's just I had okay. a big crush on Tandy Newton because of this movie. Uh, this this was uh, one of the fir- uh, the first DVDs that I owned uh, when I was in. Uh, this was this was the year two thousand, and so I was fourteen. I saved up money to buy my own DVD player, and uh, this. This movie, Remember the Titans and Charlie's Angels, were the first three DVDs that I own. Um, I love Remember the Titans. Oh yeah, it's it's the only one of those three that holds up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but yeah, Mission Impossible two and like I was DVDs were so big at the time and it was so cool because like this was back when they had like dynamic menus and they had special yeah. features were such a cool new thing and I I watched any and all special features. Uh, on all of my my early DVDs, and yeah, so I I love Teddy Newton in this movie, and the, my favorite thing to actually come out of this, and it's the only thing probably that's good about Mission Impossible Two, is there was a phenomenal sketch they did for the MTV Movie Awards th- that oh, year. Oh yes, yes, where they they had Ben Stiller play Tom Cruise, C R O O Z E, who was Tom Cruise's yep. stunt double, and they they basically do like a fake featurette talking about his his work and everything. And the best thing that they do, they do is they do uh, talking head interviews with both of them together, where Ben Stiller is basically doing his own Tom Cruise impression, looks just like him with like a wig and everything. And uh, the the best part is they do a thing where he's like, you know, we're so in tune now. He's like, I just feel like we finish each other's sentences. And then Tom Cruise is like, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like we finish each other's sentences. And they both say it at the same time. And then they both do the crazy Tom Cruise laugh at each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such a good sketch. If you haven't seen it, uh, go watch that because it's so good. I also wonder if Tom Cruise got into the editing bay with like this three and a half hour cut. He's like, all right, where do we fucking start? And then he just starts going through it. And like a half an hour, he just walks out of the room. He's like, why are there so many fucking doves? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it is interesting because I, I, it, it's almost a, a mini documentary worthy kind of uh, experience. Because from what I understand, getting into this a little bit, everyone ended up kind of hating each other on this film. Tandy Newton did not like working with Tom Cruise. John Woo did not, John, John Woo and Tom Cruise did not hit it off, even though Tom Cruise like sought out John Woo, right? It did. The, the, the relationship didn't work. Um, you know, he initially wanted Brian De Palma to come back, but Brian De Palma refused to come back. And so like, you know, I, it, it's just like from what Tandy Newton says, Tom Cruise felt, like intense pressure to make this successful. And it was a commercial success, right? It was, it was a huge commercial success. Uh, critics didn't love it as much though, as the, as they did the first one. Now he got them back obviously in the next one. Um, but it, it, it just seems interesting. Like there's so much behind the film. 
and you know, listen to Ben, you know, through Smart List and different other podcasts. Listen to the directors talk about like for some reason the culture of a film not on camera oftentimes ends up on camera somehow, you know, and like I, I wonder if that played a little part in this as well. That it just all of the mess that was happening between Tom Cruise and John Woo and J Tom Cruise and Tandy Newton and you know um, having a hard time. I mean, they delayed filming on this for a year just because Tom Cruise wouldn't you know get done with Eyes Wide Shut, um, yeah, and like that nice. went that went way too too long, you know. So everyone's waiting. Uh, Tandy Newton had to turn down like a major role. I forget which what it was for, but. Uh, I actually know I know what it was for. It was Charlie's Angels. She was supposed to be in Charlie's Angels. Was um, she really? Yeah. Um, and she had to turn that down, which, again, for her, would have been a huge deal at the time, right? Um, it would have been. Because that, so, that, that movie changed the careers of like of all those people. And so, you know, so you, you I think I, you, you have a little bit of probably souring there already by the time yeah. you get to the film making. Uh, um, Andy and Newton I, I could have been used Lawless, and she could have then been in Ballistic, X versus Sever. You mean Lucy Liu? What did I say? Lucy Lawless. Lucy Lawless. <laughs> which is even better. Which is even Candy, better. Candy I, Newton could have been Xena. Leave it, leave, leave it in. I, no, I love it. I defend that. Yeah, that's what I want. Oh, no. It's, 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 it's staying in. That is a phenomenal <laughs> mistake. <laughs> hey, and, and since you guys are, are Tom Cruise fans, I, I wanted to put to you guys, because, again, I, I, I really – I'd love as a fan to hear your perspective and as kind of a more, a little more of an academic, uh, academic for film studies for you, Brad. So Tom Cruise is like, you know, he, he's passionate about doing his own stunts. Mm -hmm. The sets are the directors don't want him to T typically they don't want him to right now. I think they've given up even trying to stop him, but well, now, um, now I think actually now I think it's completely changed. Like, uh, you know, Christopher McQuarrie is uh, who now has directed the, the um, most recent installments of the Mission Impossible franchise. He's all about it. He's he's yeah. all about doing these crazy new things. Well, and and again, because it's also from what I read, a, a non-negotiable for Tom Cruise. He is oh, yeah. going to do his own stunts, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. But is that wise, right? Like so, like so, Tom Cruise says, "I'm going to do it," which, from what I understand, also lengthened some of the filming because, again, he's incredibly skilled, incredibly brave, athletic, but he's not a stunt guy, right? And so, like, uh, in order to do some of these things, there's a lot more training that has to go involved. Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's worth it to have somebody like Tom Cruise, who's one of the most bankable stars in the world, uh, probably maybe even the most bankable star in the world, especially at this point, to do his own stunts and to make that fight when you've got capable stuntmen and stunt women that can do these things? I mean, for for me, like it's worth it just because it's cool to see somebody like Tom Cruise taking on all this stuff and actually doing it. Like to me it's a big draw like and and it makes it all the more impressive that tom cruise actually pulls off this incredible helicopter maneuver in mission impossible fallout um mm -hmm. he, in that same movie he also d uh, does an actual uh very risky and dangerous skydive um you know in the previous one he actually hung outside of a cargo plane as it took off from the ground and went into the air and you know they have safety features in place to make sure that he's not you know going to die or anything like that and he goes through endless amounts of training to make sure that he's doing this to the best uh, of his ability. And he's no, he, he's not half asking it. Like he, he puts no, all himself no. into every no. single one of these uh, performances and, and the stunt work, you know, it is extremely impressive. And to me, it's just, there's something that is extra special about knowing that the actor took the time to do it. And that's actually him doing that. You know, like there are so many times when like, Oh, stuntman probably did that. There's no way, you know, Tom Cruise took that fall or is climbing the Burj Khalifa. Um, and it's, it's incredible that he does it. And I think it does add a little something extra. So um, you do get more enjoyment out of a film knowing that. I, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just impressed by it. I, I just think it's yeah, incredibly okay. cool. What about you, uh, Benny? I think the, the people go to see a Tom Cruise movie now because of that. And he, I think the, the reason he is one of the most bankable stars in the world is because that's his, his, his niche when people do look forward to that aspect of it, it's for the same reason that Maverick was so good because they had the actors actually in the cockpits pulling G's for real. You can't fake that. No, yeah. no matter uh, what you do with a stunt double, no matter what you do with CGI, you just can't, you can't fake, you know, the, the human brain, the uncanny Valley thing of just looking at something that's really happening to somebody and that it makes it real. And so that 
has been in, in ingrained with Tom Cruise's career now, such that unlike any other actor, when you know you're signing up for a uh, Tom Cruise action movie, you know it's going to be good because he's putting literally his life or whatever on the line to, to do this. And I think that it's just it's meshed so well for him that it, the bankability of Tom Cruise is because he does his own stunts. So you're starting to go to some of these films, especially his action based films, which is almost all he's doing anymore, really, kind of uh, to, to see what's he going to do next a little bit. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. What, what, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Okay. yeah, for sure. And honestly, the, the what's great about it, too, is he's so dedicated that like it pushes his co-stars to, you know, even go above and beyond. Um, you know, when they did uh, in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, when they did the Burj Khalifa stuff, there's a sequence where they took out one of the windows up on one of the high floors. And Tom Cruise is he misses like a jump to land back in the hotel room and he falls and um, Paula Patton and Jeremy Renner, like they, their characters dive to like grab him. And Tom Cruise is actually hanging outside of this window as it and Paula Patton is right on the edge and Jeremy Renner's right there with them. And they're, they're all, you know, right on the edge of this, the, the tallest building in the world, you know, and so like doing all this stuff, like it's, it's very cool to see actual actors stepping up and, you know, going above and beyond a normal performance. It's cool well, shit. Yeah, well, thank you for filling me in on that, guys. As a whole, it, it was only okay. Of a film, it wasn't like, <laughs> so. yeah. Mission Impossible Whoa. Two is a uh, yeah, be, not not good, not good. Uh, but you'll you'll definitely enjoy the heck out of Mission Impossible Three. Oh dear and, God, stop uh, making me watch these. As we as we wrap up uh, this, uh, what we movies we've seen, I did want to tell you, Brad. I finally did get to see Brittany runs a marathon. Oh, oh isn't it so good? It's really, 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 really good. I didn't really. Yeah, I think so too. I think yeah, I love that one. We were putting movies on this list. Uh, uh, Bailey and I were today of movies we hadn't seen, and it just popped up. And I was like, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and watch that. And it was it's heartwarming. It's uh, it's a story of overcoming uh, who you are, and 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 find, kind of overcoming who you are, and also becoming who you are. It's, and, also, yeah, and, it, and also being happy with who you are, even if it's not like this ideal version of yourself. Yeah, it's it's very very clever uh, the way they do it, and I, I just really and, 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 and it's a film you can rewatch too. That, that's what I like oh, about yeah. it. It's one of those you know Devil Wears Prada type things where you can just you know put it on again and watch it, and it's you're just as happy watching it. Yeah, while you're, you're, you're fixing a cabinet in front of your kids or something, you know. Can yeah. I can I tell you guys? I have seen the Devil Wears Prada a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm way not, too many times, like seventy five times. Are you are you I'm, confessing or what? Like kind, are you kind, like kind of kind of because like I'm not ashamed necessarily, but like it's it's one of the, it's a great it's one, film. It's a great movie, and honestly, it's one of those movies where like it's very comfortable to just put it on in the background. It has a great soundtrack. It's just it has great why performances. Why do you good guys, humor? Like, yeah, you're, you're acting like you're putting these movies on like you're lighting fucking candles. You know, you just put it on in the background. It's like a fucking, <laughs> it's a mood change. It's, it's you know, it's, no, it's like, and I'm just honestly, get a little. Get a little <laughs> Moscato. I just get a little Moscato, and you know, get my comfy jammers, what? and I and I just watch it. You know, that's how I. That is how I feel, though. Like, like there are a lot of movies to me that like fit fit me. Like when I'm in a certain mood, or when like I I want comfort. Like movies are do act like comfort yeah. food for me. Um, you know, there there's a lot tons of movies I love to put on, uh, repetitively in the background while I'm working, just because like I I love them, I I know them, and like they're not gonna distract me, and I just I like have hearing never... them. Put a movie on in the background ever, not once. Ever? Oh, oh I have. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, oftentimes, usually comedies or you know something like yeah. a rom com. Lot, lot, yeah, lots, based, lots yeah. of comedies for sure. But Ben, honestly though, there's never really a time when like you're doing anything at home where like you would have the opportunity to put a movie on in the background. Like you, you do all your work at the office. Anything else that is like work that isn't at like Laporte's in this gutter requires you to be somewhere else. It's not like you're at home you know, doing paperwork or yeah, I, like, I get, like, if I'm going to put something on the background, it would be like a podcast or something that you only need to listen. But to I, can, but, I, but that's the thing is I, I can't do that. I can't, I can't put on a podcast uh, that I haven't heard way. because, yeah. because I can't pay attention to it. And I, and I, I keep missing it. And I keep having to rewind because I don't, I didn't hear what happened. No, but but because I've seen Twenty One Jump Street a thousand times, yes. I can put that on, and and I'm fine with it because I, I know where all the jokes are, and they still yeah. hit when I watch yeah. it. You know, yeah, um, stuff like but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% Twenty One Jump you. Street, uh, Tommy Boy, uh, yep. Zoolander, yep. Wayne's World, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like these are all movies das I put Boot. on. The love Das Boot, so hilarious. <laughs> Just put that on the background. Oh my God, Mwah, Chef's kiss. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's the Devil Wears Prada. It's a really good movie.
Okay. Uh, I, if I you know, haven't seen it, you should, you know, it's, it's new. Bullshit. Jesus. Ben, have you seen The Devil Wears Prada? I've seen it literally once. You know, you should watch it again. It's a delight. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't, and I am, when I'm going through these movies that, you know, we're trying to figure out all these movies that we haven't seen so that we can challenge each other to watch them before the next podcast. I'm including movies that I've seen once, but I don't remember. Like, I'm absolutely leaving those off my, my seen it list. Cause I'm like, oh, last of the Mohicans. I think, I, I, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I've, I haven't seen last of the Mohicans since I was in like middle school. Exactly. Yeah, I should probably take off a couple of those. Cause I know I've seen it, but like I was telling you guys, uh, through our text chat, I'm I'm not sure I remember it fully, you know, because I watched it in yeah. like 1998, you know. And every now um, and then there are, there are movies that I feel like I saw when I was younger, but like I want to watch again because I feel like I didn't get like a full grasp on it. Oh, it's going to hit differently, right? Yeah, it's going to exactly. hit very differently. Oh, we, yeah. we actually talked about that uh, today because uh, Bailey and I were talking about Will Smith movies and she's never seen Enemy of the State. And I go, oh, well, it's been a while since I've seen that, but it's it would probably hit tremendously differently now because back then what was you know state of the art surveillance would be like shit you could do from a cell phone now you know yeah i love i had that dvd uh brad i love that i love that film honestly that i but I, but even though the technology has gotten more advanced i don't think if you made that movie today it would be all that different and and they already kind of did with uh with eagle eye with shia labeouf um so yeah i mean if shia it's not- labeouf is no will smith in that in the 90s though Oh, I mean, he. I mean, he was pretty popular when Eagle Eye was made, but no, definitely didn't have the star power. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, guys. So we guys we, we did trailers? watch some trailers, right? Let's talk some trailers. All, All right. right, so uh, we'll start with uh, the movie trailer that we're watching this week. It's uh, the greatest beer run ever. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm I am so glad you made us watch this, by the way, um, because. I uh, saw this, like, I, I, I saw the name, right? Because my my YouTube al- algorithm is pretty much just, like, trailers, right? That's all, because we watch so many trailers. It's, like, trailers and, like, Pokemon videos for my son. And um, and so, like, I, I saw this come up, and I'm like, oh, this, you know, what it, it, what is it going to be, right? Is it going to be? And then I saw Zac Efron, and I, I actually really like Zac Efron. But yeah, I didn't watch it. And I'm so glad you did, because... I'm telling you, man, I love this trailer. And I got into it, and I'm like, this this, this is based on a true story, right? And so then there was a, what, 2015, a short-form documentary made on this. And if you have not seen it, boys, you need to go see this thing because it's the act, or it's the actually actual people this movie is made out of, uh, made for, or not made out of, um, but made about. And it's seven, maybe ten minutes. It is so freaking good. And it made me even more excited to watch this film. It is such a fun story, man. It is going to be, I think, I think it's going to be really fun. And I, I love the cast. Uh, I think P- Peter Farrelly is going to do great in this. Um, so we'll see, but I'm excited. Yeah, this is, so this looks better than I thought it would. I was expecting this, um, even though Peter Farrelly has done something, uh, did a lot, did something a lot different than he did in his earlier days with Green Book. Uh, if you don't know who Peter Farrelly is, previously he was part of, the uh, brother directing duo, Peter and Bobby Farrelly, they did Dumb and Dumber. There's something about Mary, me, myself, and Irene. Uh, but Peter Farrelly made a big change by doing this uh, drama Green Book that won Best Picture, uh, which, you know, whether deserved or not, probably uh, a discussion for a different time. But now he's you know, getting into a different territory. And this kind of like splits the difference between his comedy years uh, and his um, dramatic years. Because I was expecting something a little bit more uh broad as far as comedy is concerned but honestly the tone of this feels like something more akin to like a good morning vietnam almost yeah uh uh, and i'm i'm interested in it i i hope that it doesn't veer too much into like saccharin uh territory i think there's some of that potential here and i'm hoping it doesn't uh get there you know because there there is some of that in green book where it feels like it plays you know with your emotions a little too uh generically and I, I worry that this might do that, but the the, tra- the trailer was good. I liked it. You know, it's um I like seeing uh, Russell Crowe in the in this kind of movie. Uh, Bill Murray actually seemingly doing a little bit extra character work. You know, he's not just mm-hmm. being Bill Murray in this movie, which was which was nice to see. Um, because you know, obviously Bill Murray's great. You know, in everything, but he's usually playing some form of Bill Murray. <laughs> you yeah. um, know, um, but yeah, it, especially I, at this point in his career, right? It is like yeah. everyone wants to see Bill Murray just be Bill just be bill murray right yeah um, ben how about you uh i didn't love the trailer as much as you guys did um i think that it feels a little dated like the 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 whole like record record scratch type thing where it's like you know like 
oh, I bet you're wondering how I got here. That's kind of how it felt when it like dinged and he was like in bed. I don't know. It just felt a little dated. That's all. But the story overall looks great. And I think the movie's going to be good. I just didn't really love the trailer. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, okay. I, okay. I, I mean, I, I think so I like so you. I mean, so that's I two think... for the greatest beer one ever. And Ben doesn't give a shit. No, I, I mean, <laughs> it's a better trailer. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's hard to cut a trailer for these kinds of stories to like really put forth like what's, what's funny about it comedically, but then also like the, the drama that, you know, will pull your heartstrings. Um, like people who cut trailers really like they deserve a lot more credit because trying to boil down, you know, a, a 90 minute to 120 minute movie into just a couple minutes and convincing people to see it is like, it's, it's an art form in itself. Well, and, we and the masterclass that was the Munsters, and so really, hey, <laughs> well, let, let, let us let's be honest. Everything will seem dumb compared to like Wakanda Forever, right? That is, there are masterful trailers, and that is like one of the most masterful trailers. Everything else doesn't seem as good. I mean, we he, just watched the trailer for the menu last week, and it was awesome. Like, there's great. It was good, but it movie. wasn't Wakanda Forever. I mean, come no, on now, but. Trailer, um, but I will say this, you know, again, watching that short documentary of this, because I was just so interested in the story, watching the trailer. Um, it, it is as absurd as the trailer makes it seem. Like, like the, the story really is that absurd. It was like a bunch of guys sitting around a bar and the bartender mad because, you know, people aren't supporting the Vietnam War. And they've got, got you know, buddies that, you know, sons of some of these guys that are drinking at the bar that are over there literally dying. And the guy's like, oh, I'll bring him up here. That literally, well, that is the story. Like that is what happened. That, uh, that, that Good Morning Vietnam vibe that Brad was talking about. I think that that's it. Could be a modern update to that, and that's why I'm, I'm I would like to see this movie. I want to see if they can pull that off. Yeah, yeah, and and these are the right. These are the stories that you don't write about in history books, but they're the they're the fun stories to retell. And so I'm 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 just excited to know about. I think I think these here. are the stories that we should preserve, and nothing about real history. Like uh, like I don't want I don't want the details of the actual Vietnam War. I just want these fun little That's side right. stories. That's yeah, right. That's right. No, Chicky, no, whatever his name is, Chicky something. Yeah, the stuff that's in history books, like get get it out of here. Kids don't need to know that. It's time to tell like the real stories. Yeah, I just I want I want movies like this, Apocalypse Now. You know, the, the just the fun light stuff. Yeah, major <laughs> major pain. That was not about Vietnam. No, I know it's not about Vietnam, but it's like, <laughs> but, it, but it's but it's uh, but it's you know it's it's the kind of military movie we do. Oh, so Sergeant Bilko. Yeah, dude. Seriously, I love Sergeant Bilko. Does it hold up? Have you seen it lately? I, actually, I have not seen I, it in the last I like, actually, twenty years. I actually just watched it uh, last week. It was on uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, it was on one of the Stars channels, and I I put it on in the background because it's a movie that uh, I saw like oh. I, I saw when it came when it came out. I remember we rented it on video, and it's it's a movie that I wouldn't call great. But the cast like elevates it and makes it fun because it's it's Steve Martin, it's Phil Hartman, it's Dan Aykroyd, um, you know Chris Rock has a bit part in it, and it's just it's just uh, you know a very chill comedy. And Steve Martin is doing what he does best in it. So like I would never tell anybody uh, that this is a phenomenal film that's one of the best comedies ever. But I genuinely enjoy Sergeant Bilko. They don't really make comedies like they don't give you know movie star movie comedic actors you know. No, this yeah. money to make those movies anymore yeah, it's too really bad don't. too because those are those films filled the 90s yeah and such a, such are still a some of my favorite comedies of all time right and it's like, like uh, here, here's the theme go for it see what you can make funny out of this you know what if uh, a sergeant in the army was a a, a, a a slacker to the nth degree much like stripes but it, but also like way more selfish, you know, and, and then just run with it. And of course, Steve Martin is brilliant in it because he plays that character so well. And, and, and I don't know, maybe they still do this, Brad, you would know. I mean, the, the problem is, is comedies don't right that people, they don't make the money that they used to, or they just don't, you know, like uh, people don't go to the theater to see comedies as much. And so there's this weird kind of, it has to be made for Netflix kind of world, but um, yeah, uh, or it has to be, or it has to be like such a high concept comedy that like it's really it's not, monster. it's not, it's it's not just a straightforward comedy anymore. You know? Yeah, like even, and, and action comedy. Even movies like like comedies like uh like Neighbors and stuff like that have fallen to the wayside. You know, there there used to be a much bigger market for like Judd Apatow's R rated comedies and stuff like yep. that, and and they're yep. you know even those aren't as popular anymore. They don't they don't come around as often. 
and what we're no, seeing more, and there has to be uh, kind of a dramedy element to it now. You know, the, one, um, the only ones you are seeing these days are, I mean, we we are getting a few uh, book smart. Uh, good boys, the kind of coming of age stuff like super bad is still around a little bit because of those. But then the adult stuff you're getting is like tag and game night and which are great, but, but they're, you know what, those are like three out of the last 500 movies have been those. They just don't make them anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, what was interesting, you. you know, listening to again, the uh, SNL podcast, these kind of things is, you know, it, it's not like they, they, they had Tommy boy written. They said we're going to do a movie with with Adam Sandler and 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 uh, or not Adam Sandler, sorry, David Spade and uh, Chris Farley. Right? We're going to make a movie with them. Let's figure out what what story we're going to tell. Um, and the same with you know their films following. Like there was so much more. Hey, you know, certainly we have an idea, but more than an idea, we just want Steve Martin to do a film, and we'll figure out the idea because he's a bankable star. He's funny, and we just got to get him the right kind of um palette to to paint something great let's make another steve martin picture (laughs) i mean well sergeant bilko too sergeant bilko came around a time too when uh hollywood was obsessed with turning old tv shows into movies because we got sergeant bilko uh we got mikhail's navy we got uh was that with fraser crane was that with fraser yeah yeah kelsey Grammer was in that tom arnold schneider Oh, sorry. Yeah, Down Periscope is what I'm thinking of. That's the one. Oh, yeah. Tom, yeah. Tom Arnold is in the Kale's Navy, and uh, Kelsey Grammer is in Down Periscope. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Brad. Um, yeah, those all kind of came out at the same time, didn't they? Yeah, and they, and, it, and it wasn't just comedy, too, because they did they did Charlie's Angels. They did uh, The Mod Squad. They did SWAT. Um, they did uh, – and then on, back on the comedy, they did Starsky and Hutch, you know, all that stuff. Uh, speaking of that, Brad, did you ever see um, The Pentagon Wars? It was an HBO movie? No. Uh, it was with uh, Kelsey Grammer, and it is—it's more of a dark comedy about, about like the ballooning budget of a military vehicle, and okay. it's a lot of—it's—it sounds really boring, honestly, because there's a lot of subcommittee hearings and things like that. But it's all very dry, sardonic ki- type comedy. But it's actually kind of worth—I think that it would be fun to get your opinion on that because while it doesn't fit that kind of, there's no slapstick in it, so it's not like that. But it's still this kind of edgily dark comedy about why the Pentagon spends so much fucking money. It sounds kind of like Doctor Strange Love. A little bit, but obviously nowhere near. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. I, I mean, I would imagine so. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that in the same breath, honestly. <laughs> yeah, just like it, he said. Just like it. Yeah, so. per, yeah exactly. Per Brad, it, exactly like it. Every uh, bit as good as Doctor Strange Love. Oh, so m- moving on, guys, there was one more that I'm excited to talk about, but I, I, I got the vibe through our text thread that you guys didn't love this as much as I did. Yeah, we watched the trailer. Uh, this is for a, a TV series. You know, there's honestly, we're at a point right now. Um, studios didn't really come back like in full force as I think some people hoped they would, as far as making this a, a true blockbuster summer. There were some big movies, uh, and there was you know at, at least one major release pretty much every week. But usually the summer is like filled, where you have like two or three choices when it comes to big movies, uh, and the studios just weren't ready to come back. And they didn't really think theaters are going to be back in full force, and in some ways they were right, in other ways they weren't. Um, but like now, especially usually mid August through most of September is like a dead time for movies. It's, uh, somewhat of a dumping ground. You'll see some, some bad horror movies, some movies that probably won't have as big of an audience. Uh, they get released before award season and Halloween season comes around and we're kind of in that ground right now. So there haven't been a ton of, uh, exciting movie trailers lately. So that's why there's been more TV uh, on, on this show. And so this one we watched was a trailer for Wednesday, which is an, Adam's Family spin-off series kind of thing uh, that's happening at Netflix. And, uh, you know, I uh, I want to see, like, did you know that Tim Burton was doing this before you saw the trailer? No. No, I did I didn't know this was a Tim Burton thing. Did um, you guess I, this was Tim Burton five seconds into the trailer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that was not hard to see. You know, obviously he's got... He's got uh, stylistic, like very stylistic certainties, right? <laughs> like you just know it's him. Uh, yeah, and honestly, that's a big part of why I uh, don't really care much about this right now. Um, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. It just feels like it's playing in that same macabre comedy kind of territory that he's done so many times before, uh, and to a much lesser extent in his recent years of his career. This is stuff that he did at his best in the '80s and early '90s. Um, but this feels like it's, you know, it's just not, not what I want to see from Tim Burton anymore. And it just feels like 
it doesn't also doesn't feel like it's on par with the this the satirical darker comedy of the Adams Family movies because I love the Adams Family movies. Um, well, uh, Nate, I know you haven't seen Titanic, but there's a scene in Titanic, and Titanic took place in the '90s, much like Tim Burton. And there's a there's a scene in Titanic where Jack is holding on to something, and you're just like, <laughs> and fucking let it go. And you're popping in the '90s, and and you need to let it go. And Tim Burton, he held on a little too long. Yeah, and still, I, it's I mean, still holding I, on. I, I think it's fair, right? I think it's fair to say that. Now, I will say Tim Burton didn't write these, though, right? He's directing them, but he, he did not write them. So he. But the directing not... is the most important part. I agree, but he did not write them. So the story itself, though, certainly Tim Burton's going to craft how it's told, but the story was not written by him. It was written by the people that created the show Smallville. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that it's going to be great. I don't think Smallville was great or anything. But, um, you know, again, I, I, I think... I'm I am ready for a retelling of Adam's family that isn't the same, right? We just had the cartoons. I don't know, you gave you, I don't know if you guys saw the films that came out recently, the uh, animated films. They're not great. They're not very good. Um, and, and and so like I, I I actually like deeply like the Adams family as uh, characters. I grew up lo loving the show. We didn't have cable, so these were on like you know uh, WGN or you know our. Uh, the, the UWCY or something like that, or 46, you know, the, like the, the stuff that was able to show reruns cheaply, those uh, stations. Um, and and I, I really enjoyed these characters. Um, now, and I, I actually, I like the 90s retelling of it, right? Um, but you don't need to redo what they did in the 90s. I, I'm okay with live, letting those be the, these films. And so having a, a, a TV series based specifically and poignantly on Wednesday Adams seems like an interesting take. And I, I'm, 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 a, I'm here for it. I, I think it could be interesting. Um, I just feel like they're trying to ride the coattails of their success with uh, Sabrina, the teenage witch, the more, you know, sure. uh, dark teenage, teenage geared version that now ties into Riverdale and, and all that stuff. This doesn't feel like it's quite necessarily geared towards like the CW audience that likes Riverdale and all that stuff. But like, yeah. I, I just know it, it just feels totally unnecessary to me. And honestly, oh, I, I, as much as I love Luis Guzman, I don't feel like he fits no. the vibe of Gomez Adams no. at all. I, I 100 percent agree with you. And that was the that was my my big, you know, uh, I think this for this. one. I th they didn't that didn't work for me. And honestly. I think Catherine Zeta-Jones is acceptable, but I, I think there was a better actress for for uh, Morticia Adams as well. And, um, and the biggest thing so. is just the, the shadow that is cast by Raul Julia and Angelica Houston's performances in those yep. Adams Family movies. They they are perfect in those roles. They are in, they're incredible in those roles. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I just don't know almost. how you yep. yeah. yeah, and I just don't know how how you top that. Well, I mean, you know defining role for Raul Julia is of course M Bison in the Street Fighter. <laughs> well, other than that I will give you it. Yes. Oh, boy, uh, but boy. Jenna Ortega, um I, you know again though th there's some young actresses here or young you know there's a young actress that you know g give give her something to work with and see what she could do. And um I, I don't know I'm who she saying... is. She is the uh, she was in the most recent Scream movie. Yes, she was. Yep, that's right. Um and so, you know, give her give her some time. She was also in Jane the Virgin and a couple other things. But um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just think uh, I'm hopeful for it with all the caveats that you have said there, knowing that there's certainly going to be hurdles and it's going to have a hill to climb. But let's, let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope for a good thing. Uh, so interestingly enough, Christina Ricci uh, apparently has a role in this series. So she played the original Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family movies. And they haven't said what her role is. I feel like maybe the best bet and what would be somewhat cool uh, would be if she was playing an adult version of Wednesday Adams and she was like the narrator and like did like bookends for each of the episodes or something like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. But at the same time, I'm not sure the best move for this series is to remind you of the much better version of the Adams family than the one that you'll see in this series. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's for sure. You know, I, I, yeah, heard... I, don't, I don't really care too much about this. It's just, it just, it, who's this for? Like that was gonna be my question to you earlier, Brad. Like it doesn't, I don't know who this like what audience is supposed to. Is this a kids thing? Is this adults? Is it? It's the, you're absolutely right, Brad. It's the it's the Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which again you may not have watched this Sabrina, but I mean people did, right? That was a huge yeah. huge show for Netflix, and so it is. 
certainly, you know, um, tied into maybe the WB. Uh, like you said, I hate saying Riverdale, though it is a popular show. You know, I'm, I'm hoping yeah. it's riverdale i'm hoping that there's something unique about it um because I i'm feel imagining like the they, WB they probably has now played that archie universe i think to to you know to death you know yeah so. i think this they probably want to hit all the older adults uh who either watched the, the classic tv series or loved the 90s movies and may be interested in seeing what this new version is and then kids who just kind of like this kind of story may be familiar with with you know uh, Jenny Ortega or something like that and they're trying to get like a mishmash of like you know various uh, audiences to hopefully tune into it That's so as a trailer did you like the trailer I know you got your you know reservations about the show itself did you think the trailer was okay it was hard for me to like separate, separate my opinions yeah. on the two like, like I think it's a, I think it's a fine. it's a fine trailer you know it's it definitely it made the show look better than I, I was anticipating uh, but the show itself, you know, I'm still just so uh, not interested in it that I was just like, mm, okay, whatever, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Um, interestingly enough, I don't know if you guys knew this, Tim Burton was actually supposed to direct uh, the Adams Family movie, the the original one from the uh, the early 90s, but he had to pass on it uh, due to scheduling conflicts with Batman Returns, and that's when Barry Sonnenfeld uh, was signed up to take the job. See, and and back then, I would have been like, oh my god, give me a Tim Burton Adams Family. Yeah, you know, in the late '80s, early '90s, when he was hitting, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, exactly. But no, now it's just like, nah, we're good, buddy. No, 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 Grandpa, go to bed. <laughs> take take your circus to Las Vegas. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Sure. So, uh, one other thing: apparently, there's a big mystery uh, surrounding who is going to play Uncle Fester in the series. They haven't announced it, and a, and it's a secret that everybody is keeping. So, it's Christopher uh, Lloyd. I mean, that would be the best choice. I don't think that they'd be able to get him back, especially considering how old he is now. That would probably be quite a commitment for him, unless he's not in the show much. Um, but there was there is a, there was a rumor going around that it might be Johnny Depp, which would be awful. Um, but I, I I think that it's been debunked already. So I'm very curious yeah, to see who, I think who it's they, going to that, be. I read that as well. You know, do you, do you guys? David so Harbour. Uh, I'll take David Harbour in anything. Quite frankly. That's what I would like uh, to watch. Oh my gosh, David uh, Harbour as as Uncle Fester would be amazing. Be awesome. Yeah, I'll take him in. I, I literally anything. Um, but uh, so, do you think Johnny Depp is going to get a hero's welcome back? <laughs> I mean, there's there's a bunch of scumbags out there who would love to welcome him back, and there's a bunch of women out there who don't care how terrible he is, and they just want to suck on his mustache. Um, or you know what little mustache there is that he has, I guess. But yeah, I just, I honestly like, I don't give a shit about Johnny Depp anymore. I don't care if he ever makes a movie ever again. Uh, and honestly, like, I, I, I don't think I would be any like amount of excited or interested if he joined any project. I would just be like, ugh, whatever. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think, I think he needs. To, from what I understand, he's broke. Uh, you know, or what he says he is. Obviously, when you're going through the courts, everyone gets broke real quick. Um. But um, especially when there's money to be had in a lawsuit. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure he's going to want to work again. And I know, you know, as well as I do, there's going to be some director that's going to give him that chance. And Yeah, I mean, they're letting James Franco, uh, you know, play Fidel Castro. So anything is possible. Listen, Mel Gibson is still making movies, guys. You're, he's fine. Johnny Depp's going to be just fine. Maybe we can get Mel Gibson and Johnny Depp and James Franco in a movie and just, just call it shit. <laughs> <laughs> just just pure shit uh so are you guys gonna watch wednesday are you excited uh no. i am actually stop it i'm gonna watch it at least the first couple of episodes we'll see where it goes i am choosing to be hopeful about this tim burton don't let me down give give me some big fish and not everything else you've done since then <laughs> don't let me down tim burton <laughs> good luck <laughs> uh well that that was it for trailer talk uh yeah we did trailers guys it was so ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. you had your trailer talk no no, no. there was a was... trailer and you <laughs> talked about it and and you watched it and came up with an opinion because that's what we do on this podcast bin all right, I love coming up with theme songs after the segment. Yeah, no, that's really, really smart. <laughs> right. 
you guys, if you guys want to just keep going and sing the games uh, theme song, I, I, I'll, I'll let you do it. Oh, uh, Ben, no, why buddy, do we, we don't want to take away the, the gift that you will give to everybody. That's yeah, just I'll, it. I, yeah, uh, I yeah. don't want to rob you of this joy. Well, why is that it that you, you guys can this? just you can just like fucking you know middle about and and it's 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 it's, it's never anything special, but you just do it and then it's all it's like see it's so easy. I mean, it's it's honestly it's a mix of confidence and talent and it's not though because you're just over here like it's, I'm coming up with a new song about games and it's not gonna be long, but we're gonna That's have good. a good time yeah. with Fred and Nate. And either way, it'll be great. And now on to the games. Like, that's See? all you yeah. do. Yeah. Well, that's what that, you, was that, was, that was amazing. That was amazing. That's, one, that's that one of the amazing. best theme songs the you've, best ever you've ever done. Oh, that's yeah. terrible. That's just this I've is never been, word. literally never been more proud of you than this moment right now. Oh, I hate you both so much. That's all you do. You don't You don't even put any thought into it. You just fucking say, yeah. I will say, no, we, good. I think you missed an opportunity to do one set to the Adams Family theme song. Too late. I already sung. So there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do we have today? What kind of game? All right. Uh, I wrote a game, guys. Um, oh. It's called, uh, hey, where's that colon? <laughs> Answer, so Colin Powell. I'll give, you, I'll give you a movie title, and you tell me if it's got a colon in the title. Oh, okay. And if you get oh. it right, you'll get a point. Okay. Now, guys, here's the second part of this. Here's the colon after part of this, okay? If the movie does have a colon in the title, you'll get a bonus point if you know where the colon goes. Oh, okay. So but okay. but Brad, if you get it wrong, your opponent will get the point. Ooh, I see. Ooh, Sneaky. This is tough. This is tough. Well, so, I, and also, I would like to point out very quickly here that I'm giving you the name of the movie, and therefore, you're both on your stupid phones and computers. I'm going to trust that you're not going to look it up because that's well, just. You can, right, you I, can, I, you I, can I trust you. Me. I will not. You trust I me? Because I don't. I don't like to cheat because I like to win by pure talent. All right. Uh, I don't, so I don't like your attitude. Well, <laughs> hey, I, I really want you to not be googling these things as I'm saying them. Okay. I, I yeah, can, and don't don't use Ask you, Jeeves. No Ask they, Jeeves. No no Bing. No Netscape Navigator. None of that. All right. All right. So Nate, I, I promise you, I am not. Okay. Nate, you're you're up first, buddy. Gotcha. Master and Commander: The Far Side of the World. Does that have a colon or not have a colon in the title? It does have a colon. You are correct. Where is the colon in the title? After Commander. You are correct. You have two points. Ooh, what a sexy boy. Bradford. It's the first two points I've gotten in the like three months we've been doing this. Way to go. Bradford, here we go. Mm -hmm. I, I believe you mentioned it earlier, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Uh, yes, it has a colon in it. All right. And where is that colon? It is after Strangelove. That is incorrect. Oh, is it really? It's Dr. Strangelove or colon. Wow. I, yeah. That's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to find that this list gets harder and harder as we go. Hey, do, do I get points then? You get a point there. So Nate yes. has three points. Brad, you have one. Okay. All right. All right. Nate, yeah. Birdman or yeah. the unexpected virtue of ignorance? I'm going to say there's no colon. You're correct. There is no colon. Do you know how I know that? Because I did look it up for uh, the movie list that we just made. If you notice, it's on there. It's yeah. It's it's in it's in parentheses, right? Uh, the parenthetical is after or. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But there's no colon, so I got oh, I get the points there too. I'm, yeah, four four points. I think ready. If if I'm right, uh, so I've got. Four Three points. points. I got two for that, so that's five total. Yeah, and I think yeah, Brad's got points. zero. No, yeah, four yeah, points, buddy. Yeah, four point points, back. buddy. Dang it. Oh, boy. He's, he's trying to cheat the point system. He's not cheating with the answers now. He's trying. Yeah, he's always trying or, to. Get, no, I forget. Uh, ben, how many points does Brad have? Brad's got. You got one, Brad. Isn't it funny how cocky Nate gets when it's the first game he's ever been winning? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to win it at all. Like, and like, <laughs> give me two more rounds, and I'll be like negative four somehow. All right, Bradford, you ready for this one? Sure. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. Yes, it has a colon. And Brad, where is that colon? It is after Wick. It is not. What? It is John Wick Chapter 3 colon Parabellum. I thought, are you sure about that? What, what's your I source? Absolutely 100%. I am because not I, looking it up, so I cannot confirm it. Because, because I thought it was John Wick colon Chapter 3 dash Parabellum. It is not. It's, uh, it's John Wick Chapter 3. Parabellum. 
I promise. Oh, wow, wow. I'll even look it back up again one more time. I, I do believe. I'm, I see. I, I see it on uh, IMDb and Wikipedia, and it says John uh, Wick colon chapter three dash Parabellum. I, I saw it on a movie a, poster, and that's where I got that it. That is a the point movie for me. The movie poster is not where the official title yeah, should be taken from. Ever yes, listed it everywhere is. else, it is John Wick yeah, colon chapter three yeah, dash Parabellum. Yeah, yeah, that's a point for me. That's a it's, point for Ben then. So I have a point now. What? How did you get a point? <laughs> okay, so it's Brad one, Ben no, t- three. Okay, this is all right. Two points for Brad. I will give you. I will give you. uh, I will give you two points for that, of course, because you are uh, technically correct. Which is as well. No, technically correct isn't correct. No, no. But now it's pissing me off because I want to see where. Yeah, see on just on 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 the. if you just search it on Google and it comes yeah, up, it's, yeah. If you if you Google, that's the first thing that came up, and that's why I was like, no, that's not right. And if you scroll why down, you every, everything. I see, I, I'm not googling. I'm not. Cheating. Everything else is colon chapter three dash parabellum. And I and I know the reason that I know this in particular because not only is it more recent, but like we always have to make sure we adhere to those special things when it comes to titles because otherwise studios will literally email us and be like, hey guys, can you guys change the title? Like this is the actual format of the title. Oh, so so you just picked a game that like he he actually. For his professional career, has I, to I got the first one wrong, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Brad, you have three points. Nate, you have you still have four points. Nate, you're still leading. No, I think I have seven by now. Oh All right, my god, Nate, <laughs> Nate, the, the your your movie is The Hangover Part Two. I'm gonna go. I I, I honestly don't know, but I'm gonna go with yes. There's a colon. There's no colon. Ha ha. <laughs> Still got the four points. All right. Brad. Yes. Barbershop, the next cut. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say yes, there's a colon. You are correct. Where is the colon? Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's after Barbershop. It is. <laughs> <laughs> what, what 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 you know? <laughs> All right. So, Brad, you've got five. Nate, you've got four. Nate, Cheater. your next movie here. Yeah. Is uh, the Godfather? Well, well, hold on, hold on. I don't want to win in disingenuously. Uh, I think I only have four points. No, I think you have five. Because because don't you don't you only get a bonus point if you if you don't guess where the colon is correctly? So you had three before. Yeah, you had no, three I, I, before, and you just got two, wait, right? Wh- or no? Wait, why did I have three before? Or did you only you have got, two before? Yeah, two I only have John Wick one. Yeah, but and so so then now I get another two, so that brings me to four. No, you had one. No, no, I. Oh, I, I see. You're, you're right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So you should have five points now. Yes. Yeah. You're correct. You're correct. Okay. And Nate, you should have four. Okay. All right. So, Nate, The Godfather, Part Two. I'm gonna go with yes. There's a colon. There is no colon. Boom. So, part two. Schooled again. Bradford. Hostel Part Two. Oof. I'm gonna say yes. There's a colon. Yes, there is a colon. And I'm not even gonna give you another bonus point because that's just it's too easy. Oh, what? What is it gonna be? Hostel Part Colon Two. Well, you can't change the rules. <laughs> You're the one who wrote the game. Don't give me an easy one. I, I do feel like he should give me the bonus points for that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. Uh. All right, so Brad, you have seven because this that's worth two points right there. And Nate, you've got four. Still, son of a gun. All right, Nate. Here we go. I beat this game. Go. Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. <laughs> I'm going to go with, yes, there's, there, well, there, there, there should be a colon. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're, right. <laughs> it's, you're right. It's not a run on sentence, it kind of is. But uh, yes, there is a colon. Where is a hey, uh, hey, Nate? Where's that yeah. colon? All right, so it's uh, Bad Lieutenant. Say the name again. Bad Port Lieutenant, of Port of Call, New Orleans. Is there one after Lieutenant? And is there one after? Orleans? You tell me. You tell me. I'm gonna say yes. There's two of them in there. Okay, you're incorrect. There is only oh, one. Oh, also, I just want to say, you just said there was a colon after Orleans. 
which is the end of the title. Oh, sorry. I, I, didn't, even know, I didn't even know this movie. That would be absolutely amazing. It would all. What is the uh, what is the uh, grammatic uh, uh, article for uh, dot dot dot? What what is that? Ellipses. Oh, uh, ellipses. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Portugal New Orleans yeah. colon, meaning like it's just like a dot dot dot. Like we don't know. We'll see what it is. <laughs> yeah, we're... Uh, so I still get one there, right? Because I got, I got to, got yeah, all right, I got, got five. five. So Brad does get your bonus points, so now he's up to eight points. How? All right, Brad. Yes. <laughs> this might be my favorite one. Okay. Police Academy 5, Assignment, Miami Beach. Oh, shit. <laughs> there's, A, I, I want to talk about there's a Police Academy 5. There's a Police there's Academy, a, Academy there's Yeah, there, isn't there, isn't, aren't there eight of them? I don't know if there's an eighth one. I know that there's oh, okay. a seventh one. Sure. Okay. Uh, yes, there is a colon. And uh, where do you I, think the colon is? I, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there that there is two, and I'm going to say it's after five and before mission. Or wait, wait, sorry, sorry, say the full title again, so I know. Police Academy Five Assignment Miami Beach. Uh, after assignment. So you say you say there's one after five and one after assignment. Yes. You are correct. I'm going to go with that yes! together because I, I feel like we should, we, we should go with that. <laughs> because Nate gave you the idea that there might be a title with two colons. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, exactly. You're right. It's definitely yeah. not my years of writing and grammatical experience. No, definitely, yeah, definitely exactly. Not. No, I gave you, you that. To, so I'm going to share points. the points for that one. Nate, yeah. you've got four. But I got you, five. You, oh, sorry. You got five. Sorry. 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 Uh, Nate. It's the first game I've ever gotten points in. Don't take them away. Nate, you should know this one. <laughs> I was wondering when we were going to get here. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Well, I have not seen that one, so how would I know? But I'm going to say, yes, Mission Impossible has one, because I know that Mission, um, there is one after Mission, because it's Mission uh, colon Impossible. Okay. Uh, whether or not there's Ghost Protocol after that, I don't know. Uh, I will say... There is. It's Ooh, mission. Imp- so close. no. Wait, I, I wasn't. I, I did not. I did not decide for sure, guys. You, you did. This, this is not who wants to be a millionaire. There's no final answer. Like, you, okay. no, you did not say is that my final answer. No, no. It, it, this is one of those things where oh, my hand was still on the chess piece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I had not moved it yet. I had no. Not moved uh, it yet. So you you are correct. You get you get a sixth point because it does have a colon. It is okay. mission colon impossible. I knew that. Hyphen. Okay. Hyphen. That's what it is. Hyphen. All right. Bradford? Yes. Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. Uh, yes, there is a colon. God, uh, there should be. And it is, but, <laughs> but it is only after Croft. Incorrect. Or, sorry, 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 sorry. I meant. Oh, no, after, no, 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 no. I, 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 will, I will not accept the point if that's how it goes, but I do know that the colon is only before Cradle of Life. I will accept your first answer because that was what you said. That's, so that's, that, that's fine. That's fine. I, I misspoke, but I do know where the colon is. Uh, so, yes, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, colon, the cradle of life. Fred, you have 11 points now. Yeah, no, 12 even, points, sorry. Because, because Laura Croft, Tomb Raider is the title without a colon. Yeah, and you have yeah. 12 points now because you got Brad's, or you got Nate's bonus points from Ghost Protocol, and you got one there. So you've got 12. Uh, Nate, you've got five. And here that. is your last one, right. Nate. No, no, now he's got six because I just got that last, that colon one wrong. Oh, thank you. Uh, Brad, you got six points. Uh, and you got six points. points. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so, so, Nate, this is your last chance. And let's just right. say this one's worth 10 points. Oh, All right, good. good. Only for uh, me, though. Yeah. Rambo First Blood Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say yes, there's a colon. Okay, and where? And yes, you're correct. So where is that colon? Okay. Um... <laughs> Rambo First Blood Part Two. A, 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 after Rambo, you are correct. Yes, it was Rambo colon First Blood Part Two. It's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, and Brad, just for shits and giggles, because you are the winner. Um, break into Electric Boogaloo. Uh, go kill yourself. <laughs> where, where, where's the colon, buddy? If there is one, uh, I'm pretty sure it's after two. It is after two. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> You've won a game that has been titled, Hey, where's that colon? That's fun. Hey, I'm surprised. Where's that I'm colon? Surprised. Hey, where's that colon? Hey. 
Where's that Cole and Ben? Oh boy, that went longer than I wanted it to. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised you didn't Don't interrupt choose, my songs. choose uh, even more movies that uh, should have a colon but don't inexplicably. So there, there aren't quite as many as you would think. Like I was looking some of them up. Obviously, um, Birdman or the Unexpected Version is one of those that's pretty long. Yeah. Um, Doctor Strange was a really fun one because the colon really isn't where you would think that it yeah. would be. But I get it. Um, but yeah, the the longer titles, like I was looking up, you know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragons, a comma, you know, that this like there's things like sure. that. Yeah. There. It was yeah, just. It, like, it, it, it has been happening more recently. Like, uh, we we actually constantly had to fix um, Jurassic World Dominion, which does not have a colon in it. Um, there you go. And then, like, uh, people always forget whether or not Tron Legacy has a colon in it, and like stuff like that. Do people yeah, always there, forget uh, that? There's a, a, a proliferation now, in since like 2013, like everything has a fucking colon after it. All yeah. all, all movies now have colons, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the uh, that's the show, man. We did it, guys. Hey, good we, game, buddy. Good game. Right. Yeah. Good yeah. Game. yeah. I love playing colonoscopy. <laughs> Where's that colon? <laughs> well, well, guys, uh, that, that that does it. Thanks, thanks for listening. If yeah, you like sorry to... that we're you're remote. You can't feel weird when we're when we have to do it remotely. It gets a little choppy with the audio sometimes. So, the, you give us five stars though, if you please, if you're listening. You know, tell your friends. Yeah, are we back think... in the studio next week, guys, or no? I don't know if you guys heard what just happened, but it sounded like there was an explosion outside. <laughs> That's what I heard. I, I didn't know. I thought it was lightning or thunder. Was that in there. Utah uh, or was that in Laporte? <laughs> I don't know. No, that, that's here in Utah, and I don't. It's definitely not thunder because there's no rain clouds or anything. It's it's it, it was very loud, and it sounded like an explosion. Oh, cool. Are well, you, uh, uh, this will be the last episode with Brad well, because yeah. there's a nuclear <laughs> explosion. Sorry, guys. I I will the, the air raid yeah. sirens are going off. That's my <laughs> cue. Uh, but no, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, please uh, rate us five stars on iTunes. Subscribe there. Do the same thing on, on Spotify, Stitcher, um, Ear Jockeys, uh, Q- Q-Tips, and uh, li- Listen Hard. Those are the other podcasts. Yeah, so, definitely, right? definitely go to Listen Hard. Yeah, it's like a, it's, it's Die Hard mm-hmm. theme, so you'll love it. Oh, I thought it was yeah, pornographic. Just, just as I say, maybe don't go to it during work, though. You know. Yeah. Or or do and see how you know uh, flimsy your rules are at work. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, everybody. Again, this has been uh, uh, Go Flix Yourself with uh, you know Nate Laux and and Brad for Omen. Brad, Brad, where where can the people find you? At Ethan underscore Anderton on Twitter, uh, doing writing at SlashFilm.com. Also appearing occasionally on the SlashFilm Daily Podcast, especially now because we're doing uh, our usual recaps of new Marvel shows. She-Hulk is happening right now. We'll also be doing the same thing when the Star Wars series Andor starts in September. Uh, Those happen typically on the day that the show is released. Feel free to check those out. In-depth nerd kind of shit. And uh, yeah. And Nate, how about you? Where can the people find you on the online? Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, join me and one of uh, 17 other people uh, by following me at Nate Laux. Uh, and Wait, you follow are, yourself? Uh, fo- yeah. Um, and then also you can find me. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the new uh, graphic we have made for the Go Flix Yourself podcast. I am finally now in the graphic. Uh, I will now agree to share this podcast. <laughs> that's pretty smart uh you can find me online too guys it's been a fun time uh have love fun you guys you saw brad tell britney so we said that we love her and we miss you and her and everybody and have a great rest of your week we'll talk to you guys next time bye everybody bye nah cheating eh?